the Greeks were the first to recognize that the globe was in fact spherical and they made depictions um, at various stages um, throughout history but certainly there are examples of celestial globes from the third century AD. Unfortunately no terrestrial globes uh, exist from this period. In fact you have to jump all the way forward to the 1490s when Martin Behaim, a German geographer, first made terrestrial globes and there are some of these examples still in existence. From Behaim's time forward for the next couple of hundred years there were um, some incredible cartographers and globe makers who made the most stunning depictions of, of the globe and as knowledge increased, cartography got better, these globes became more and more accurate, the very wealthy society would have a terrestrial globe and a celestial globe in their grand drawing room um, to show their friends how knowledgeable they were. Um, it was quite important. As the Industrial Revolution happened and as full colour printing came in, so you didn't need to have a hand colourist. And whilst that made globe ownership open to the masses, it decreased their aesthetic value. So when I set about doing this, I, I kind of had an idea to make a globe. I, I thought it would be quite a quick process. Well, I think I probably just thought that the, the art and the craftness of, of a globe had, had just been parked to one side. I didn't realise it had actually been lost. The difference between the old globes you see in museums and modern globes, not just in the way they look, but in their accuracy, is phenomenal. I would look at the, the old globes and that would be my inspiration for the level of finish and the accuracy that we, we needed. It did take me about two years to work it out and that was trial and error every single day. Making globes, you can make the same globe over and over again and just by virtue of making it more times your hands take on form, take on shape that allows you to um, make it accurately without any errors. For me the biggest challenge in this was the fact that I had to learn massive amounts of patience. The problem with this whole process is you can't practice and then reuse the same material. You have to practice with all the finished, the correct materials you're going to use. Um, because those are um, very resilient materials, you then have to throw it away. So I would spend once a week going down to the local tip, throwing away about half a dozen globes um, and pray they wouldn't try and, um, try and charge me. The earliest globes were obviously made using very organic materials. They would use papier-mâché, plaster of Paris, wood, metal. Obviously, whilst we were inspired to make globes with the aesthetic appeal of the, the older globes, we've been lucky in that we can now use much more modern materials. So we use composites and resins, which hopefully will add to the durability of our globes and make them last as long as many of these early additions from the Middle Ages have lasted. The Louvre originally had two huge globes. Louis XIV saw these and wanted to have a pair for himself, so he commissioned Coronelli, who was a famous cartographer, to make him um, a terrestrial and celestial globe. And quite amazingly, the Louvre still have the original copper plates for the celestial globe, and so they've asked us to remake this for them. We've already been over there and, and seen the plates and they've given us some examples of the print and it's it's quite astonishing the detail but the hope is that this globe when we finished it will be hanging from the grand staircase um, in the louvre itself so um, that will be a big um, red letter day <laughs>